In this video, I'll be showing you the basics that you need to know in order to get started using Logic Pro. Welcome to the Home Studio Academy, everybody. My name is Nolan Freitas, and my goal is to help you build your own home studio and teach you how to create professional sounding recordings at home. So today, I'll be showing you the basics so you can get started using Logic Pro. So let's dive right into the computer and get started. Okay, so once you've downloaded Logic Pro, you can bring it up by clicking Command Spacebar and typing the name Logic Pro. Then you'll be prompted with many options, but for today, we're gonna keep it simple and just start out from a blank slate. And so I'm going to select Empty Project. But as you can see here in the bottom, you can configure the settings of your recording. So if you already know the tempo of your song, the key signature and the time signature, you're welcome to put them here. If you don't know the tempo of the song, it actually gives you the tap tempo function here so you can change it. Then under input and output devices, you wanna make sure that your audio interface is what's reflecting here. So if you're using you know, a Focusrite or an Audient, an Apollo, whatever it is, make sure that it's under both. The reason why it's not showing under output for me is because I'm doing this screen recording, but for you, it should be the same on both. After, just select choose. Next, Logic Pro is going to prompt you to select a type of track. So if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can either choose external MIDI or software instrument. If you're using a microphone or plugging an instrument straight into your audio interface, then select audio track. You also have the drummer option, which is a bunch of drum loops and you can drag them into your project. And the guitar and bass are amplifier simulations. And if you wanna try those out, you're welcome to do so. But today I am using the audio track here since I am recording through a microphone. Then pay attention to the audio input. You wanna make sure that this reflects wherever you plugged your microphone or your instrument to. And then you can hit create to create your new track. So now the first thing that I like to do in Logic Pro is change the settings so you actually have access to all the features that Logic Pro has. In order to do that, go to Logic Pro, click on preferences and then advanced and make sure that you enable the complete features button and this way you'll have control over all of its features. Finally, go to the record button and enable low latency monitoring mode and this will allow you to record virtually in real time with near zero latency. Now let's check out the menu options and I wanna point you to this icon here, the one with the question mark. This is very helpful for beginners because as you see, every time I hover over something, the name of that function changes. So this will allow you to see what are you clicking on and what its function is. So I would encourage you for starting out to leave this on, but let's go over from left to right. Starting all the way to the left, we have our sound library. Here's where you're going to select all of your instrument sounds. So let's say for example, if you wanted to try you know, a guitar amplifier, you just click it here and now you see that it's been added to your track. You can see all of the effects here on your chain and even the icon has changed. Moving over, we have our inspector button and that will allow you to see the chain here of your track. You can also hide it if you want to and this will give you control to pan the track and control the volume of your track. Next, you have your toolbar here, and this will allow you to make changes to the track once you record something. You can cut, you can repeat a section, and so forth. Then you have the Smart Controls button, and we have an amplifier here. Once you select Smart Controls, it will allow you to change the settings of whatever plugin you're using. In this case, it's the amplifier, so as you can see, you can make any adjustments. Okay, so moving over, we have our mixer button and this will pull up the mixer window. This just emulates what a console would look like. So if you have like 20 tracks, it will show you every single track in this project and that way, you know, you have more control over all the tracks through this window. And the way to switch between this and the other window is just by clicking X. Now moving over to the editor button, if you have something recorded here, it's basically a zoom of that and you can do any editing in your track. Moving over to the play buttons, we have here the rewind button. So if you wanna go back a measure, you would just hit on comma and it goes back for you. If you wanna fast forward, you can click period and you will forward to the next measure. Then all the way back at the beginning by clicking on return. You also have the play button, which is spacebar. 
And if you want to start recording, you would just select R and after the count in, you will start recording. So right now it is recording my voice and this is how you would record a track. And then just hit spacebar to stop. Next we have the cycle or loop function and what this does is very helpful if you're working on a part, let's say a guitar solo or you're working on lyrics or a melody. Instead of pressing play and stop and play and stop every single time, you can just select whatever region of your project you want to loop over and you'll just keep playing that over and over again. I'm going to mute it for now but so you can get the picture of it. Once it gets to the end it's going to go back to the start. Now moving over here, you will see which beat or measure of the song you're in. You can see the tempo of the song, the key of the song, and the time signature. You can make any adjustments through here. Moving over to the functions I use almost every day, which is the tuner. And once you plug a microphone or a instrument here, like a guitar, you'll be able to tune it without needing any external plugins or a guitar tuner. Then you have your solo section, which will solo whatever track you're listening to. Then you have your count in. This is just going to count up to four beats before it starts recording. So for example, if I click record, you're going to hear four clicks. Three, four. And you see, you only started recording after the fourth click. Then you have your metronome. And as you play the song, you'll keep the tempo of the song for you. So now moving over to the right side of the screen, we have our list editor and here you can make changes just like we did here, but here you can do it manually and change the signature, the tempo, or the markers. Then we have the notepad here and I really like this function in Logic because if I'm typing in lyrics or anything, I don't like to be switching between this and another application. I like to have everything under one window. So for those of you who like to write lyrics or anything that you want to write about your project, you can just do it here in Logic. Then you have your loops. And what this does is it will allow you to search the sound library of Logic Pro. So let's say for example, if I wanted a drum sound, let's say an 80s disco beat, I can just drag it into the project and now you're going to see that I have the beat inside the project. Followed by the browser button, here's where you can access all the files in your computer. So let's say, you know, I had a sound effect or something that I wanted to import to Logic Pro. Here's where I would go, find it in the computer and then just drag it into my project. Now looking over at the track itself, you can actually control how big or how small the track looks. So by clicking command and then the side arrows, you can control like how zoomed in or zoomed out the project is. You can also control how big or small the track looks by clicking the command up and down. Now let me show you the toolbar and this is very important because these are all the tools that you have at your disposal to be able to edit your tracks. So currently, as you see here, we have the pointer tool and that just allows you to move around your tracks wherever you go. You have many other functions, but the one that I use the most is the scissors tool. So let's say, you know, I messed up on this section, I would just click it here and that way you will splice up the track. And then if I wanna go back, I can hit the pointer and then delete that. So this is just one example, but what I like to do, I mean, there are many tools here. There's fades, there's solos, there's mutes. You just have to learn each individual one. So once you figure out which tools you use most, make sure that you select these accordingly. So I always leave the pointer as the first one and then the scissors as my second one. And the way that you can actually switch between them is by clicking command. So once I select command, you see how the tool changes. So once I'm editing a track, if I want to cut something, I just hit command and then I go back to the pointer and that way it just helps you save a lot of time when editing. Hey, real quick, if you're getting any value out of today's content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and now back to the video. Okay, so next, let me show you how to get organized in Logic Pro. And what I love about this program is how it lets you customize the look of everything. So for example, let's say that I had 10 different tracks, okay? I don't want to keep track of which is which and which instrument is which part. So what I like to do is hovering over the icons and hitting the right button. And then I like to, you know, label my icons accordingly. So this way I know exactly which instrument is which 
and I don't have to keep track in my mind or remember where each instrument is. Another customization tool is if you want to change the track color, you can just click on Option and C, and this way you can change the track color here. So let's say my vocals, I want them to be pink, and then you know my guitars, I want it to be green, so I would just click on the track and it will change it for me. The last organization tool that I like to use in Logic Pro is the marker tool. So if you select this little folder here, it will give you the marker tool. So just pick whatever section of the song. Let's say I started recording here and this would be the intro. I would just hit on the marker and then type in intro. And then two and a half would be the verse. And then I would just hit on that again. And you can also change the colors here. So again, option C. If I want my intro to be blue and then this to be pink or whatever. And this is very useful because if you have a really long track, you know, you want to be able to go around and just know where everything is without having to press play, stop, press play, fast forward, or so forth. So this is how I like to keep my projects organized. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to create a track and add effects. So in order to do that, just click Command, Option, N, and then select whatever type of track it is. Hit Create. And then if you want to add effects to your track, you would just go to your menu here and just select audio effects and then look for whatever effect you're wanting to add. Let's say a compressor. I would just click on compressor and there you go. It's been added to your track. Okay, so once you're done recording your song and you want to put it out to the world, all you have to do is click Command B and then hit OK and after it goes through, it should bounce your song. So there you go. Those are the basics that you need to know in order to get started with Logic Pro. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn how to record vocals or acoustic guitar, I'll be posting those videos here on the screen somewhere, so go check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in future videos.